So it looks like the Skydance deal to merge with Paramount Global is going ahead. But what does that mean for things like Star Trek? Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. Ooh, this has been going on for a couple of months now. But National Amusements and the president, um, Cherie Redstone, are desperately trying to sell Paramount Global, or at least their share of Paramount Global. And initially, Warner Brothers were the preferred option to buy that, but that deal fell apart quite quickly when everybody realised Warner Brothers couldn't actually afford to um, buy anything. I don't think they could, they could afford to buy um, Cherie Redstone a cup of coffee, never mind buy all her shares in Paramount Global. So... A surprise person stepped forward. Actually, it shouldn't be a surprise because it's turned out um, his family and his um, backers are incredibly wealthy. Um, but the chap that runs Skydance, a company that's worked very, very closely with um, Paramount over the last 10 years, stepped forward and it looks like they have won the race to buy Paramount Global. Now, I've actually reported a couple of times in the last month or so that they were still the front runners, even though this other company called Apollo stepped forward with $36 billion to mainly buy the movie side of Paramount Global. Um, but even though that stepped forward, um, Sheree Redstone, who is taking a personal interest in this, decided against that deal. And currently, as reported in several outlets at the end of last week, Skydance is the preferred um, buyer and they are currently negotiating exclusively with Skydance for the purchase of Paramount Global or, as I say, uh, the shares in Paramount Global that um, National Amusements currently own. I believe that is roughly in the region of 70% of the ownership of Paramount Global. So, let's summarise. What is the plan that Skydance have for Paramount Global? How does that compare to what Warner Brothers were planning? And what does it mean for things like Star Trek? Well, as I reported to you, Warner Brothers were actually planning to buy Alex Kurtzman out of Secret Hideout. The plan was to use a movie deal, a three movie deal I hear, to actually sort of like grease the wheels a little bit here. Um, that three movie deal would have been for Alex Kurtzman to produce three movies for Warner Brothers. Something that he's been trying to do for quite a while, actually, to be fair, to get back into the movie business. And that um, he would be bought out of Secret Hideout. Secret Hideout would then become Star Trek Studios. And um, that would be absorbed into Paramount, which would then obviously be absorbed into Warner Brothers. And would basically give Warner Brothers free reign to do whatever it wanted with Star Trek moving forwards. I'm hearing the Skydance have no such plan. And it shouldn't really be a shock that Alex Kurtzman has been doing a bunch of interviews recently, reminding people how much he loves Star Trek, and actually in one interview specifically saying that he wasn't going anywhere and that he was looking forward to working with Star Trek for many years to come. An odd thing to say, unless you were planning to leave and had changed your mind. Well, it isn't really that he's changed his mind as such, as the Warner Brothers deal fell through. A deal that actually a lot of people in the industry expected to happen. So, Skydance currently have no such plan to get rid of Alex Kurtzman. That is going to hmm, be a little bit of a shame for some of us. I actually don't have anything massively personal against Alex Kurtzman, except for Discovery Season 1. That I actually do solely put at his feet. I do blame him for that. Um, and I am going to talk um, in the next video about some other things he's been saying recently, which I'm not particularly impressed by. But I don't blame him necessarily for some of the bad Star Trek we've had, even though he's been the captain of the ship. I don't blame Secret Hideout. I think they've been trying to make good TV. They've just missed the mark for me. But... I would, I think, have preferred Alex Gertzman to have um, been removed and Secret Hideout to become Star Trek Studios. I think that was a good plan. I think Warner Brothers had a really good idea what they were going to do with Star Trek in the next 10 years. And I'm not sure Skydance have that idea in mind. 
Um, basically, what I'm being told is this guy, Dan, don't want to do anything immediately in the short term to rock the boat too much over at Paramount. They will need to um, trim some of the fat of Paramount Global. There will be a plan to um, deal with um, Paramount Plus, and that is probably going to be a merger with something like Peacock. And that um, that is really going to be the priority because Paramount Plus continues to lose a... I think it's fair to say crap load of money. Um, I think the last quarter deal was something like two hundred and fifty million dollars. I think they'd lost, um, which basically means since its inception, it's lost about two billion dollars. So, um, sorting things like that out are going to be a big deal. Also, Paramount owns significant real estate. Um, that would also generate significant funds. Something that in the short term, um, Skydance are probably going to need to do to um, deal with some of the financial matters. So basically, they are getting funded um, by Daddy, who's the guy that used to, um, who was the founder of Oracle, the um, computer tech company. And there's a company called, I think it's called Red Kite, off the top of my head or something like that. But they're an investment fund um, from the Middle East. They will also want um, some return on the investment that they're putting in. So that will be Skydance's initial um uh, plan is basically to trim the fat sort out paramount plus and get back to making movies and television that people actually want to watch now i actually think this is a good deal for skydance and for paramount but how come skydance were able to get it even though they're offering actually less money than people like apollo it comes down to Cherie Redstone over at National Amusements. She really wanted a deal that would not only work for her and to allow her and her company to get out of Paramount Global and to generate a few billion quid along the way, but also that would be good for Paramount in the long run. It was felt that a deal with something like Apollo, who were planning apparently to break Paramount up into you know, more profitable, smaller sections, was not good for Paramount in the long run. But actually a company like Skydance that knows the entertainment business, knows how to print movies, and actually has a really good relationship with Paramount already, now that was a good deal for Paramount. Cherie Redstone apparently was very keen to make sure that Paramount as a brand and as a provider of amazing entertainment would be safe in the long run. And that actually Warner Brothers was the preferred 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 um, option but skydance is not a bad second so it does look like actually national amusements does have paramount's best um wishes at heart and actually does want what's best for them and that is great but as i said for star trek that does mean skydance are most likely going to skip um getting rid of alex kurtzman and they probably will just allow the secret hideout deal that's currently in place to run down. I believe that runs out um, in about 18 months. So there will very unlikely to be renegotiations with secret hideout for a new deal in the next 6 to 12 months. And it would look like it may be they might run that deal down and then decide what to do with Star Trek. I think that would be an interesting proposal for two reasons. It would basically force Alex Kurtzman and Secret Hideout to take Skydance seriously because the contract, as I say, runs out. They could just, you know, return Star Trek back into the Paramount fold and actually not really have anything to do with Secret Hideout in the future. Now, that would be a problem for Secret Hideout because Star Trek is by far its biggest revenue earner. The other thing is, though, that actually it would allow Skydance time to potentially negotiate with Secret Hideout to do the Star Trek they want. It would give them time to, you know, really review what's going on with Star Trek, review the plans of Star Trek, and during the negotiations to maybe renew the contract, get Secret Hideout to do something with Star Trek that they would prefer, and maybe even get a slightly better financial deal along the way. I actually think this is very potentially something they will um, delay for as long as humanly possible to get the best deal both creatively and financially and it basically comes down to the fact that skydance will have a perfectly good excuse why they're doing that because they have got other things to do so that's where we're at it looks like skydance has won the race to buy paramount 
But what do you guys think? Get into the comments. Is this the best thing for things like Yellowstone, Star Trek, and other brilliant franchises, movies included? And do you think it's actually what's best for Paramount in the long run? It's a creative company, a company that knows how to make TV and movies that are going to be taken over. Is that a good thing? Get to the comments and tell me exactly what you think. If you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out and you'll never miss any of our new videos. Also, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack where most of our new videos do appear first. And you get to see them without the adverts, you lucky bunnies. As always, please stay safe and I'll see you next time.